to add uh, an executive session for legal matters. Okay. And then I just wanted to bring up uh, talking with the employee compensation, which is the first item. Based on the information that's in our packet, would that be better served in executive session? I think it seems like there's at least one individual we want to talk about. Yeah, but I've got a couple know. actually. There's a couple things that I need to discuss. So do we want to move? That needs to be moved to executive session, at least for the the, the discussion. And then back out and make a motion. Yeah. I've got two requests that I need to talk to you about. Yeah. And we're probably going to take action on that. So we'll just, yeah, let's we come back just, out. Do we want to do, do it first? first? Do an executive session to talk about the compensations and, and then be able to come back in the session? Yeah, I think so. There's no point. No. Yeah, we can. Well, we, yeah, we can. Okay. Yeah. So please don't. <laughs> <laughs> let's try to go home. <laughs> So yeah, we can, but wanna, it's after, it was scheduled to be after okay, his appointment you. anyway. Yeah. No, we, oh yeah, 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 so we can do that, so, yeah. I'll do that, so. Okay. So we will have um, Fred and Sullivan Powers, um, we'll stay at 6.15, and then we will go into an executive session to talk about uh, personnel issues, and then we will come back out to start right where we were at with the employee compensation area. Any other? And then finish the meeting with an executive session. For and to finish, yeah. yeah. Any, any other additions or? No, I make a motion we accept the agenda as amended. Second. Second. Okay, all in favor? Third. Aye. 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 Did you get all that, Lisa? I did, thank you. <laughs> Well, since we've been nice to you on uh, approving the minutes, we figured we'd just jumble up the agenda. Sure, right? yeah. Just ramp it up a little bit. Okay. So. All right. uh, we'll open up to public comment or inquiry. Anything that's not on the agenda tonight that you'd like to do? Uh, I'm the chairman of the board of so. Buffalo Road. Waste management, and I've been selected to ask the board members of Bethel why they have not passed or agreed to the solar array. Uh, if you can tell me yes, no, I guess I've done my part. <laughs> well, at, at this point, all, all that we can say in, in uh, open session is that we have reached out to the Royalton board. Select board. Uh, World and Select Board to get a, a meeting, a joint meeting together that we can talk about in an executive session. Um, we, I reached out a week and a half ago to the World and Board um, and we have not been able to set up anything currently. So at this point that's all, that's all we're really to say in open session. That's fine. So, <laughs> I've done my job then, I think. So we're, we're working on it. We're just, Getting a meeting with the two towns, and then, then we'll be able to discuss further. Do you or the board have any questions of me of anything? I don't think no, so at I this think time. So. I don't think it. Really. Some of the other members do. I don't think at this time we have any questions in regards to that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for Thank coming. You. Yeah. No problem. Any other um, public comments, inquiry? Anybody that's here for something other? Making it easy on us. And, and on Fred. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and on Fred. All right, well, uh, it is not 16, 15 yet, but Fred is here. Um, everybody's all set with moving forward with Fred's appointment. So we'll move up, Fred. Thank you for coming this well, year, Fred. And I know in the past we've kind of, in the past we've more or less had our had our audits, and you know we've kind of looked through them and talked a little bit um, through it. Um, but it's good to have you come and actually um, put a face and, and get some of the comments maybe from you that uh, we should be looking at a little more in depth. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, I know the the board has, uh, well actually, I'll say Greg has 
work very hard on uh, looking through some past audits and putting into some policies in place um, where some of the recommendations have been in the past on some of your comments. So. Yeah, no, I see tonight on the agenda too, there's some more policies that yeah. uh, some of them have been recommended. So that, that's, that's movement, that's good, so. Um, I'm here, you know, to answer any questions. I'll give you a quick overview of, you know, the, the numbers are, you know, almost a year old now, so I'm not gonna spend much time on that, but um, I can just give you a general overview of what, what comes out of an audit and uh, kind of tell you what, where we are now, so. And I think, well, not to interrupt you, but I will. <laughs> no, go ahead. Um, but I think, you know, maybe going through this would be helpful is, um, you know, maybe just kind of an overview of where, you know, where the town of Bethel is at right now yeah. versus, you know, you kind of know our history a little bit sure. about what, what had been going on. Yeah. And maybe just kind of put some comments in the place of uh, where, where maybe we should be looking to go towards, uh, where have we been, and maybe some of the progress that you've seen the town yeah. do. So that'd be good for the town's people here. So, yeah, there's been a lot that's changed over the last you know, not X number of years, and you know, the result is is that uh, at this point in time, first of all, we, we've given you a clean opinion and financial statement. So, you know, one of the deliverables is the bond report that tells you where you stood. The other one's a letter of recommendations, and then the third is just a letter that we were cooperating with and the audit. You know, uh, could have gone smoother, but but we were cooperating with everything we asked for. We eventually got, um, but it was, it was a tough off. Turnover, as you're aware, of our transition, um, just a lot of things that need to be dealt with, and a lot of catch up. And I know Teresa's worked hard to, and still working hard to make sure that this year you get a, you know, a, we, we walk into a clean uh, financial statement and hopefully get you financial statements much, much earlier than in the past. So you have them uh, at least by town meeting and hopefully by budget time. So I mean, that's the goal, so that you have good work. Um, obviously, you're all aware that you know your general fund is a big deficit, and that's the result of a lot of different things: the, the flood, uh, a number of projects that, that went over budget, like public works projects that went over budget. Uh, the bottom line is, is that you're you know you're sitting there now. Once you collect your grants, which is you know, two hundred thirty thousand, could be a million, million one at least as of a year ago in terms of the deficit. Um, as a board, you've got to, you have to deal with that. And the, you know, the, the thing that makes the most sense probably, while it's, while it's hard to swallow, is really taking out some sort of debt and paying it off over time. Uh, I'm not a lawyer, so I can't give you legal advice, but my understanding is the statutes say that you have two choices, take out debt or raise the rates immediately. Right. Raising the rates immediately just isn't, you know, isn't feasible. And so when, when other towns have been in this situation, they've gone to the voters and asked them to be able to take out a bond to pay over the next number of years. And um, that's where we currently are at yeah, with the townspeople. So we went, we went before everybody at town meeting day with that. Our number was higher at that point. But, yeah. Um, yeah. 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 And that's good. And that, that, that for, for a government, taking out debt creates revenue. Mm -hmm. uh, because when you're looking at a general fund, you're really looking at cash flow. You're looking at the ability to pay your current bills, and so if you have new money coming in from a loan, then it's going to provide you cash flow flow to, to pay off your short-term note, and then be able to, to at least get back to even. Over time, we'd love to see you build that fund balance up to, you know, somewhere two hundred fifty thousand dollars. When you start thinking about that, your first taxes isn't due until August fifteenth. That means you're running without money for forty-five days. The amount of money that you run through 45 days in your budget equates to about a quarter million dollars. And so, you know, the goal would be that, you know, get back to that even and then start to think about having a fund balance policy that, that allows you to develop some number. That's tough, you know, that, that's hard because now you're going to have new debt on the books. Um, but, but as a board of and as a town, what it allows you to do is to make sure that. If there are rising prices, health insurance, fuel, oil, another flood, hopefully not, but, but something that's unexpected, then you've got a little wiggle room in terms of making sure the tax rate is at least stable. I mean, unfortunately, it's going to rise probably, but if you have some level of fund balance, then you, you don't have to try to hit that. It eliminates the spikes in the rate. 
Can I get you to talk about this a little bit? Um, sure. It's an interesting situation because we've been um, not necessarily around this deficit, but in general, over the last four or five years, been trying to work on capital planning in a, yep. in a variety of ways. And, and a few years ago, we started trying to put money aside for, a cap, for our capital fund. Yep. Um, and we've gotten a lot of um, negative comments from people about slush funds. Mm -hmm. um, and as if the town shouldn't have quote unquote undesignated funds available. And yet it sounds as though, I'm not saying it doesn't make sense, but it sounds like you're saying it makes sense. And it is, it would be an interesting piece of public information for us to, to have in a way that we can educate our voters about the value of actually, I mean, we all have slush funds and we all know the value of them, but when somebody stands up in town meeting and starts saying, you mean it's gonna be a slush fund? Well, like it's got some negative connotation. And, it does. Yeah. And I guess if you explain it that it's a cash flow reserve, that you don't have money coming <laughs> for 45 days. Yeah. I mean, they know when their taxes are due. Yeah. And it'd be like saying to somebody, you're gonna to have to pay your rent, start paying for food bills, part, but we're not gonna pay you for 45 days. Right. And they'd say, well, I'm going to have to borrow money or I better have some money to start with. Yeah. And so as a town, you've been borrowing money and paying interest on that. And having some level of fund balance allows you to get through those days until the taxes come in. It, it's a one-time thing. Once you develop that first fund balance and get it up there, all you're doing is adjusting it for inflation. Every, uh, you know, yeah. adding a little bit to it to stay even. So it... it and that's why most towns that have developed a fund balance have done it over a number of years. You're in a position where you've got to deal with the deficit. We got to take it out of the hole first, and then once you get to level ground, then you've got to start thinking about going forward. But it's a long term proposition, it doesn't have to happen overnight. Right. And, and you can keep the credit saver too as a policy. You can develop a right. fund balance policy. Correct. See how we're talking about here the accrued liabilities for payroll when someone gets done and they have this payout. Fred said, you know, that could be part of your Sure. So you don't have to budget for it after the fact. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And actually, then that doesn't become, that's not undesignated, that's designated. Because yeah. you're good, these people are going to leave eventually. Yeah. And they're going to want to get paid for that, you know, that, that uh, accrued time off. And if you don't budget for it as, you're, as they're earning it, then again, you get those spikes in the budget because they, you get hit for the year when they leave, and then you got to replace them too. And so you kind of get a double hit. And so, this is a philosophical discussion that every town wrestles with. It's nothing new, it's nothing new in terms of this town, it's nothing new in 40 years that I've been doing this. You know, ultimately the board has to make, you know, your decision in terms of good governance, in terms of what you think. Ultimately the voters get the last say, they get to vote on the budget. And so, you're right, it's a convincing process, it's an educating process on making them understand that it, this isn't money that isn't spoken for. This is just trying to make sure that you don't have to all of a sudden hit them with big spikes in their rates. I mean, that's worse. I mean, I don't, you know. Well, it's exactly what happened, is we went for short-term loans to cover spikes, and then, right. we, didn't cover, then we didn't pay back the back. And it's built up. That's right. And then we sh melded them together <laughs> and built them. <laughs> right. Right. I mean, it basically... And they were all, everybody had good intentions, but it never, you know. Right. It's like living off a credit card yeah. and taking on a new credit card to pay off the old credit card. Yeah. And it gets bigger and bigger to the point where now it's, you know, it's a million dollars. Yeah. But it took a long time to get there. It's going to take some time to get out of it. I mean, it's, yeah. it's nothing that's going to happen overnight. The debt will make you at least back to be a solvent. Though that, and then at least you've got a plan then that that debt service payment can be budgeted over the next number of years. And so, and that, that's the convincing you have to do the voters. So the, the carrot is, is that it's good policy. The stick is, if you don't do that, you're supposed to hit them on the tax rate. By the way, that's when they don't get a set. If they that's defeat great. the budget, you still get to set the rate and send the bill yeah. for the whole deficit. So you've got to convince them that in approving this, in which I guess they've already approved it, yeah. and it's a new point. You just have to but we have to, keep it, we have to keep bringing it back yeah. annually and making it more and more clear. And, and, right. and, and, Boosting up your policies and right. You know, so and yeah, I mean, having a good fund balance policy is, is again, it's, it's a goal. It's, it's just something to strive toward, and, and there's lots of good reasons to, to try to get there. Is, is there any sort of industry standard on what that 
number should be. Yeah, if you look on the GFO website, GFO website, government finance officers, they say 20%. I don't know that you need 20%. To me, that starting point is usually when the taxes start coming in. So for you, that's 45 days, and you know that's like 12 and a half percent. Right. So I think if you were shooting for that, that's a that's a good start. That doesn't pay for that doesn't pay for the time off. That doesn't pay for the capital. You know, and the, the argument on the capital is, well, you know, while it's nice that we won't have to go borrow the whole thing, why are you asking me as a current taxpayer to pay for equipment that will be used for the future? Mm -hmm. The other hand is, is that again, it's a rate, it, it's trying to make sure that you keep those rates stable. So there's a trade-off. I mean, you know, I can see. It's just being conversant enough so that we can have a, a right. conversation. I mean, the first step is having a good capital plan. At least you think you know when things are going to have to be replaced. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, and that plan is fluid because, you know, something's going to happen earlier, you push something back. I mean, that, that's the nature of capital plans. But having one at least is a great start. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you've done that homework, that's good. So currently we're collecting heavily on our, our past um, taxes and, yep. and utilities that are due. Is, is that an opportunity for us as we're collecting those to put towards a fund balance? I mean, is that, well, would that be the right opportunity to do that yeah, or no? For the utilities are already included in fund balance. That's money that's owed to you. It's already your money. It's a, all that's going to do is change it from a receivable to cash. It won't change your bottom line. Your <coughs> In, in the, the property taxes, that's different. If you can reduce that delinquent list, that will help you. And you know that that what we always see is when people make a real push on property taxes, they kind of get that one influx. There's always going to be delinquents. You know what you want to do is keep it to that level where it kind of you know stays at a reasonable level. There's always going to be some, um, but you want to get it to be a reasonable number. And you know having a good delinquent tax policy that's consistent helps to do that. And so. It sounds like that's what you're already doing at this point in time. So the, the, the tax money will help. The utility money will help cash flow, but it doesn't change where you are. And the collection of taxes, too, could actually help us because it's going to help cover the deficit and maybe it could borrow less in November, mm -hmm. which would help over the long term. Right. So the collections we do now, um, until we clear up that, you know, and fund that short term to a long term note, there will be no one that's made it on that. Right. Anything you collect now until August 31st comes toward last year. Right. So we'll give you 60 days to make that collection effort. And you're right, if you can reduce that delinquent list by then, then yes, that will help that fund deficit. Okay. By whatever you can do, make it less than last year's receivable list. I don't know if there's anything else in the financials. I don't know if you want to talk about some of the recommendations or. Sure. I think so. Yeah. So I, I know you have a management letter. The way that it's structured is that the, the things that we think are the most important are labeled material weaknesses, the things that we think are next important are significant deficiencies, and then we kind of hold everything in the end just as other recommendations. Obviously, the one that was the, the, the most critical from our perspective a year ago was the reconciliation of the balance sheet cuts. And that's how we started. And so that's just a matter of like at home. We just, you know, we all try to reconcile our checkbooks. So it's a little more timely than others, but, um, and that's really wasn't happening. It just, the accounts weren't being reconciled. Someone wasn't going through and saying, I gotta make sure I reconcile the cash account. I gotta make sure that the receivables equals a list. I gotta make sure that the payables works. I gotta make sure that it's just a monthly process that needs to happen. And that, what, what that does is it, it makes sure that from an audit perspective, when we walk in, we've got a clean set of books. More importantly, when you guys get monthly reports, it gives you the confidence in your department heads that what they're looking at on the budget status report is accurate. So you, you I mean, accounting isn't for us and a year later, it's for real time. It's for, the, for you and the department heads to make decisions about what do we have left? Do we need to slow down the spending? Do we, can I finish this project? Do I need to reallocate money from, from this project to that because this is a new priority? And so, you know, if that monthly reconciliation is done, that should give you more confidence that the, that the reports you're getting are accurate. Um, and, and one of the things that we had done, well, as you already know, um, you know, the system that we had here in place was usually a, um, we had a town manager and assistant town manager. Yep. But, you know, even though some of the responsibilities for each one of them was the financial portion, there was never really someone looking at the financials 100% of the time like should have been. Yeah, uh, and that was that was 
you know, the main reason of, uh, well, Greg coming on board and then yep. you know, what we were seeing was the same thing that Greg had recommended, which was to advertise for a finance director with like, um, you know, Teresa uh, happily accepted. And yep. uh, so now we have somebody. Happily for us. So now, <laughs> now we have someone full time looking at the balance sheet at all times, which yep. is and that's critical. critical. Yeah. 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 So we expect that to be taken care of. Um, the town clerk funds already dealt with, the office of the inner journal entry that I think is going to happen or has happened. A lot of the other recommendations are things you've already talked about, I mean, you know, policies, investment banking policy, a good procurement policy, uh, a disaster recovery plan, a fraud policy, which I think is on the agenda tonight. Um, you know, doing a fraud risk assessment. Then when you're done, documenting it all. You know, once you have good controls in place, uh, just doing that documentation. Um, Reducing the number of cash accounts you have to deal with, is, there was too many. And I know I think Teresa agrees with that one, the less you have to deal with, but the accounting system you have can handle multi-funds with a single account. And so the less you have, the better. Um, return check policy, and then just making sure that someone's following the outstanding checks to make sure they get paid. Uh, if you can't find who they're sent to, then it's a responsibility to send those to the state as a management property. So, We've talked to everybody to, uh, about those, and so I think a lot of these are already in the process or will be done over time. Anybody Any other you? specific or general questions? On no, it's great. Yeah, it's we, yeah this hopefully we're not sitting here again much uh, sooner and, you know, with good 18 data, so. So, yeah, so in another, you, you start in August, on your We've already been in and spent a day looking at the, uh, the June books. Uh, we've given Cherie some homework to do. Uh, I think, are we scheduled already to come back? Not at this point. So when she gets to the point where she's comfortable, we'll schedule to come in. But uh, it'll be in the fall. It won't be in the spring. I can promise you that. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions from the oh, board? And it's great we've established a rapport on a regular basis about the amount of money we're going to spend for the office, too, right. as opposed to having some big Well, that's the way it always was, and that's the way we do it. It's just when the books got out of hand, we just, you know, yeah. 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 It, was, it wasn't new construction at that point. It was uh, remodeling without knowing what's in the wall, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I thank you for coming. Right. Uh, You're welcome. Yeah. I know we've been, uh, we have been reading and uh, going through these recommendations. Uh, since, well, most of us haven't been on the board too long. Um, yep. so, you know, we are, hopefully the townspeople can see that we are moving in a positive direction. Well, we're very thankful we're having this meeting now. That, that's, you know, shows yep. the I thank you for coming out. That'd, that'd be good to annually have Fred come in and yep. you know, just spend 15, 20 minutes just explaining where we're at or no, I what we can work that, on. So. Or, yep. So, I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions in regards to anything Fred brought up? Or? Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's great. Great to hear that. So I will entertain a motion at this point to go into an executive session to talk about personnel issues. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. And we will make this as quick as possible, so it won't uh, hopefully be too long. I, I don't envision it being too long, so. Based on Greg's synopsis of uh, appropriating funds to accommodate the employee wages. 
the wave adjustments. Wave adjustments. Wave adjustments. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. sent on the day of the that the utility payment was due it was counted as late when it arrived even though the policy said that it theoretically wasn't right all right um and this why do you think and why do you think that that doesn't what what is your opinion on why that isn't appropriate policy well for, for i think for taxes i mean some towns do accept postmarks for taxes so we'll take taxes out of the equation that's that's fine um but for utilities it's hard because if you're trying to do collections by a certain date that say we say okay the utility bills are due by the 15 and so what we're trying to do is get everything out of the mail into the deposit process the deposit so that we can kick out the bills so that we can stay on interest and collection um what happens is if you're collecting and using postmarks then you have to wait, you know, three or four days longer until whoever's payment shows up and or or you process it and yeah. you have to go back and reverse the interest. It just right. becomes kind of cumbersome. And also if you you know, I mean you're a utility, you're just like, you know, think about Green Mountain Power, they're not gonna give you a, they're not gonna accept postmark. So it just seems like it makes it a little cumbersome. Um, it's manageable on taxes because it's four times a year, but I mean it is for utilities, but it's just a little difficult to, when you're trying to stay on the collection schedule. In my opinion. And the way the software works, and tell me if I'm wrong, but the way the software works is that the interest is, the penalties all assessed at yeah. the same time. Yeah. Yeah, right? yeah. It's just yeah. boom. Yeah. So, so if these people keep, if all these, these payments come in later, then you're having to reverse all those transactions. And so what is the rationale for accepting tax payments late? I think that you voted on that. No, that's not what I'm asking. I don't think there is a rationale. I don't think that Right. So then why rationale. should we, then why should we? not change that as well because i don't think you can as i mean it's like i understand it's like you send in your let's see what are the other examples like an application for something and the due date is september 1st and i mean there's and you send it in you get it in the mail for you know like a, an administrative or bureaucratic thing um, but financial i totally get what you're getting at i mean it's like the date that it's due in the office is the 15th and I think it's tough too for taxes because if I mail my tax payment on the 15th and have it postmarked, but you came in and paid, so you have to be there on the day, but I bought myself a couple more days. So if I'm waiting for a check to clear, I just bought myself a couple of days and uh, 
But the reason I didn't change it in this policy is because I think that my guess would be that, you vote, that the voters voted on that at some point in your history, so you would have to Well, if it was in the policy, the select board voted on it. Okay, I, I would guess that you had done it via a uh, town meeting. But, so I wasn't That's sure, Carl. Uh, but we can take it out. I'm all for taking it out. it needs to be consistent. Well, I mean, I think the only, I think the way I look at it is everybody should have at least the opportunity to pay for something in more than one manner. So I'm just envisioning myself as let's say I'm, I can't make it into town, mm -hmm. either physically or right. something else. I can't physically make it into town and I'm relying on the postmaster to deliver that. And let's say let's say I even sent it out two days prior to the thing, but it didn't get there until two days afterwards. I mean, should I get penalized on that? Well, you're going to look at your credit card. You're going to look at the GMP. Somebody else is going to look at the GMP. But if you came in, we would probably waive that for you. We could reverse it. Right. But yeah, but why can't I pay online? Because we can't. Well, that's where I'm getting at. So why, why can't we pay on? If we're, if we're going to take away the postmark, yeah. then we should give them... Well, electronic payment. One thing I've been thinking about is we uh, uh, pay what, online. Online, I'll pay them. What is he saying? You know, one thing I've been thinking about that we ought, and I was just thinking about that last week, for instance, my water bill. I tried to get down there every day. I had something going on every day. I could not drop the water bill off, but I couldn't put it in the postmark because it was going to be past it anyways, right? Had I been able to pay online, like, okay, do everything else, you know, through Western Union or something, you guys would have had it three days ago, you know? So I wonder if maybe. Yeah, Before we get into any college, I mean, if, if right now, if we it says that we're that. okay postmarking by that date, because there are other things that you can do on, you know, a yearly or a monthly basis. As long as it's postmarked, they let you out of it. Yeah. Maybe until we get some other, that, that, other means. Of that's got to be the only rationale is that with the post office, the postal service, you could put it in the mail on the 12th and it could get there late. Right. And, and, there, and that's no fault of anybody, right? Weekends and holidays and yeah. things. So yeah. thinking, and we can look into taking payments online, but, I will, but what happens is this. You, um, you can pay something online, but because we're a municipality and we can only, you know, the majority of our revenue is going to come from taxes, you're going to have to pay a convenience fee because we're not going to eat. We can't afford to eat the 3%. And you, there's no saturation in the market for taxes. Like once in a blue moon, someone wants to come in. So we actually stopped taking the credit card because once you come in to pay your taxes, and I said, that's great, Mr. Jarvis, and that'll be 3% on top of your taxes, you leave <laughs> and you go get, you know, a check or whatever. So there is a, a way to do that, um, but it would be but it's a not responsibility one for one of the utility yeah. payers. I mean, even, even, have to pay the even if we had to, which I got to think, well, I'm just looking at it I mean, in different ways. I mean, I can pay whatever a power bill online, you sure. know. Through Western Union, that doesn't cost me anything. Now, maybe right. it costs GMP some money. I don't know how that works. Well, usually it does. Maybe we can look into work. that. Yeah, know, because if you scan, on. if you swipe a credit card or a debit card, it usually costs the merchant is the one paying. So, but I can certainly. But, but maybe as a consumer, I mean, if I can't physically get out hmm. to pay something and I know yeah. that, okay, well, if I pay my water bill, it's, they're going to charge me 3%, which is whatever. I mean, yeah. It's an extra three dollars, then then I'm going to pay the three dollars rather than be late and, then, and incur a twenty-five dollar late payment. Right, exactly. You know, I mean. I, well, I can talk. I to just think before we go and change some of the payment policies that we have in regards to method of payment by certain dates, that maybe yeah. we got to have some more options for people. I mean, that's just fine. That's a good know. point. That's fine. Yeah. I don't have a problem with that. I mean, I, I personally would love to see some sort of easier banking with the town because. The last thing we want to do is anybody to have to call and take a payment over the phone because that takes a lot of time. Yeah. You know, you so either want to be able to do it electronically or through mail or. Yeah. So then you want to add that to the process. policy that will accept postmarks for utilities. <clears throat> I mean, I think, I think it needs to be consistent. Maybe through. Yeah, because it's not really, I think that it's not as much as you could say. It could be premeditated that you have an individual that wait until the 15th, put it in the mail, and then it's two days to get there. Um, I think the reality is that there are people who mail in their tax payments, and the reason we accept postmarks is to honor the fact that they um, might have expected the mail to be faster than it was. I don't have a problem. I mean, that's just, uh, 
particularly with our, our own <laughs> Well, there's a lot of out of state taxpayers, too. I mean, yeah. they send it in, and most, yeah. of, most of your water rates are yeah. uh, local. Did, did we have a comment or a question that anybody have? Do you guys um, send out reminders in the mail every month or to these water customers? We send out delinquent notices every month to so delinquent taxpayers. So people need to be on top of reminding themselves right. to pay this bill every month. It's monthly, right? Water no, water is quarterly. 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 Yeah. quarterly. They get quarterly bills. So they do get quarterly bills and reminders. Yeah, they get a quarterly bill to do in 30 days. Yeah. I mean, I'm just thinking because we just we just enhanced our collections policies. Right. Like, you know, you know, the penalties are a little more stricter to make sure that people are paying us. And I think maybe we ought to be a little lenient on the date in which it gets here by certain methods until we can okay. identify other methods that I might be that more beneficial for people. But, was but I, I don't mean I don't know if we're. Ready to act on the moment that we've just got it. We're taking well, it tonight. Draft, so, 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 that's why I'm here so that we can yeah. talk about it. You might be able to make any other changes. I would, I would think that there might be a uh, there might be a field that you could add, custom add to your um, accounting for those utilities that would be uh, a postmark date, a post date. So that when you collect those funds, you just enter them if it was mailed by the 15th or whatever the date yeah, was. Yeah, Kelly can reverse any interest. Well, that that's, right I'm not talking about <coughs> um, um, software. Yeah, I'm talking, I'm talking about in the software program. You don't have to do it physically. You should be able to add a field to your, to your, um, and, database so that when you're entering the payment from that taxpayer or utility payer that if it was paid by mail by a certain date you check that box and it automatically kicks back your your um, your late fees and an interest it shouldn't be that difficult to do maybe not within the office but somebody should be able well, to can you, can you, you might be able to do something in your software where I mean, if your date is the 15th that you could have clock start on the 20th or something. You know, yeah, so that you're not, not a big deal for us. So you're not getting hit on that. Yeah, it's day. cumbersome, that's we'll all. We'll just wait three days. You know, we'll just wait. Yeah, but the last we thing you want to do is, is to be reversing <laughs> entries, right. too. Right, but what I'm saying is it's not a big What we'll do is we will just wait. Instead of saying, okay, if they're due on the 15th, we usually give people a day, and then we do it. So in this case, we'll just give people three days, two days, two or three days, right. and see what the postmarks look like. So nothing can't I think at this day. point, the, the first baby step into the pool is actually getting people to pay their bills. And then we've got to worry about a little bit more on the on time end of things. But yeah. Getting it caught up in. Did anybody right. have any other questions? No, but otherwise, look, one of the that things that I'm curious about is in the last, after abatement, um, it, the first Where number one, bullet two, is a three. One Where did one and two go? You may be entitled. I don't, yeah. I don't see one, too. We've got three, four, it just starts at three. Oh, mine printed out right. Mine starts at one, two. Yeah, we don't know that. What is one, what is one say? Oh, yeah. One is taxes for persons who have died in solvent. Oh, yeah, we're definitely missing that. We don't have a. No, we don't have either one of those. Oh, okay, that's funny. I don't know why it's on my copy, so I'll double Teresa's just trying to sneak those ones in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah those are the. <laughs> so I'll make sure I'm going to lie to you. Otherwise, it, it all. Yeah, those are just uh, standards because by law, if you want to do a tax, so you have to notify people of the process. And I assume I'll just get out on the right. But other than that, you're good. The notices that we send out, are those done with registered, or certified, or anything like that, or just regular? Regular mail, yeah, certified, uh, spread, you know, if you want to send out like that, you're looking at at least $6 of yeah. um, So no, it would be something that you wait and do at the very end um, for notifications of, like, tax sale. But um, in the meantime, it's, you know, you're, we're also still trying to locate a couple of people. So. And the utilities, the statute requires to be on certain color paper. Um, pink paper. Right? Yeah, the statute. So just from an editorial standpoint, I was thinking it may be under abatement that it would be taxpayers may be entitled instead of you may be entitled. Okay. Don't have to make it 
impersonal, but you don't. Yeah. Um, Particularly since it's going to be a policy, not necessarily a yeah. something that. should respond to, to those kinds of right. approaches. Yeah. Well, I, I think they're both, is, we're probably at, this is a policy, we're at the point that we could um, approve those both. Would we approve them both as one fraud, fraud, fraud prevention policy? I would do them separately because one is a policy and one is a procedure. So I would oh, all right. Yeah. So, uh, well, then I'd make a motion that we adopt the fraud prevention policy for town employees, officers, and elected officials. Second. All in favor? All right. And yeah, I'd, I'd make a motion also to to approve the fraud prevention procedure for town residents. But you may have some high points. You sure, I have some high points. Mm -hmm. Go out to Four Corners. Hmm? Go out to Four Corners. That's my high point right now. <laughs> it's on at seven. seven. Is that a six o'clock bell? <laughs> Four. <laughs> we must yeah. have, must have gone it. through the twilight. It didn't go for some reason. <laughs> It didn't go because it's exactly oh, seven o'clock right now. Huh? You said you're one for two so far. Yeah. Well, I don't wonder why it didn't go the first time. It's weird. So do you want to um, just take us through what some of your high points right now? Yeah, I can quickly go through just a couple things. Um, I put on your desk a some stuff about the American Red Cross blood drive. So um, the employees, mostly some of the employees are going to be doing this uh, blood drive. And they're still in, in dire need of more people to get blood. So if anybody would like to do that, it's going to be um, June 28th. 
from 12.30 to 5.30, and it's gonna be at the White Church right here. So they'll have their little, I guess they have a bus or a van or something that pulls up. Um, additionally, if anybody wants to have their picture taken, we're gonna have all the townspeople, people from the town that are donating, um, meeting at the White Church at 4.30 to do a group photo, kind of do a PR thing that we'll put on our website and, um, and kind of get out there. So if anybody's interested in giving blood, um, June 28th at the White Church. Um, I have an appointment at 2.45 to give, so I may be yep. gone by the time. At 4.30? Yeah. You might have already passed out from the black and white. Yeah. Well, they, I did, yeah. Anyway, um, we're doing here, a, I'll, I'll wait. We're, we're doing a substantial amount of work. If you get a chance to go up to uh, uh, Four Corners area, I think that's Lilyville and Dark Hill, and that whole area there. <laughs> um, there's a lot of, well, historically, it sounded like there was a lot of issues up there with, with erosion and, and when it rained, there was just a lot of problems. So we got a grant through uh, Two Rivers, it's, it's state funds actually, um, to do a lot of work up there. We, the guys have been up uh, doing, uh, recutting of ditches and lining with rocks. We're doing some culvert upsizing. Uh, they're gonna be putting down new road base on the road, uh, rebuilding the ditch so that we can get the guardrail back up where it belongs. Uh, just a lot of work. and. Uh, and again, it was done through through state funds. Uh, we had in kind that we had to match, but that was easy to do. It was only 10%, and we're doing all the work. So um, we're basically going to get reimbursed 90% of the work that we're doing. Greg, how do you prioritize those in terms of where you're going to go? We have a report that was done right before I started. We had a, a gentleman come in, and there's a, a, a gravel roads assessment report, I believe is what it was called, and it outline all the different roads, all the issues we had on all of our roadways. Uh, and then the state also, well, Two Rivers, actually we have a, a, a representative of Two Rivers that we work hand in hand with to kind of help us out with that. Uh, the only caveat with this grant is that it has to be on a hydrologically connected road. So that report that we had done actually went into that also and talks about what roads are and which are not hydrologically connected. So um, typically that's what we use though, is that, that report that we have and then any input from the state that we might have, any input from two rivers, and then just kind of what we've historically seen. Uh, and then, you know, I, I won't lie to you, also it's, it's a matter of how much we can get, how much bang for a buck. Um, that project initially started out as just doing some rock lining, and then we saw the guardrail start to fail. So I went down and took a look, and, and the, the culvert had failed, the ditch had failed. So there was a lot more that we actually added to the project. I made it into more of a whole project, um, and it worked out really well, I think. So. Uh, we haven't got a, a project for next year yet. We will be looking at that same report and kind of going through the same process to try to find what, what is kind of the next in line. Um, I would like to actually put in, uh, if I could, any you know any historic information we might have from from issues in that area. You know, there's people that have been here a lot longer than I have, so we, we I'd like to kind of listen to them too and just see if there are areas that that are that have more issue. Um, I just know talking with a lot of people that that whole Dark Hill area has always been a, a significant issue all year long, it seems like. Does residential density count at all towards the assessment? No, it does not. Not necessarily. Um, that's a whole other ball game you're talking about. Um, we, I do do that whenever I do, when I will do our paved roads assessment. We actually had an assessment done. I don't really, didn't care for it too much for our paved roads. Um, I do one based on a, a ASTM standard methodology, and that is part of that because um, that's typically your paved roads are in your more populated areas, and density is, is a is a concern. Um, but for this study, it was not. It's just basically based on. Uh, I'd have to look and see how he prioritized it, but I think it was based on the immediate need. Um, I don't think level of traffic had anything to do with it. I think it had to do with immediate need, cost, um, and then the, the connectivity hydro hydrologically. I think were the three main pieces that he put into. I mean, hydrologic is a uh, is easy. You can't swing a dead cat and not hit. Uh, yeah, you're right. Creek, okay? You're right. But but there's grants. But the yeah, grants. The grants are great. The grants are related to the hydrologic. But you're, yeah. Right. But, I mean, you, you can't really do work up there and not hit a creek somewhere. But I mean, my point being, you know, living up in that area, that part where you guys are doing work, there's there's some houses, there's a bunch of camps, and. If state funds are limited, I'm just wondering how you assess, well, will you state funds here when it's not really that populated versus using them someplace else, which is also hydrologic, might be hydrologic. Right, you know, in population, I'm, I'm, it needs to be a piece of it. Uh, 
But something else that we need to look at is what is what's the biggest bang for our buck? What's costing us the most money? Where are we concentrating our efforts at? You know, in the winter time or, or in the spring, whenever when we have all these issues, where where are the guys spending all the time? And I think that's another piece that, that needs to be added to this is we want to nip the areas of the bug, the problem areas. We want to be as efficient as possible, so we want to take care of the areas that we need to take care of first. Uh, I would say that that the amount of population being served by the the improvement should be a piece to that, but just a a piece. And I think your point is that the entire population is being served by it because we're this is where we're it's a year we're we're working on a short section of road, but these are year round highway department issues that are being ameliorated through this process. So we're getting water out of the roads. We're right. getting water out of the roads in the winter. We're getting water out from under the roads in mud season. And so it's, and part of what we have to do is protect those parts of our infrastructure that have got um, more capital, so to speak. You can't let something go right. because it's, um, that was kind of part of the, the high, one of the odd things about the highway uh, prioritization is that you don't fix the worst roads first, you fix some of the better ones first so that you can maintain them better. Because it's if you say, well, that's better than the worst one and you leave it, then by the time you get around to fixing it, it costs you more to fix it than it does to maintain it. So this is the sort of the ongoing process of maintenance that is where we really spend money. Right, and then again, that's another one of the aspects that needs to be involved in this is, is where are we dedicating our time in the front? If that's a stretch, if there is a stretch that we're dedicating a lot of time and manpower to, that's something that needs to be taken care of because we could use that. You know, we're very limited on, on the resources that we have. So we want to make sure we get the areas fixed up and, and move on to the next one. If I remember right, Greg, on those, I mean, you can take that grant money, you could use it on four different roads if you wanted to. Sure, you can so use it. It doesn't have to yeah. be that one road or that interconnected road. You could, we get a lot of amount of money, uh, grant, I don't know, the Well, this was the first year for this grant. It's, um, so it was kind of a trial area, if you will. It was about 20,000. Yeah, about 20,000. And they, they think it's going to be about the same next year. We've already applied and we'll receive it. But uh, this was kind of, I want to, I don't want to say our trial run, but the, this one. Um, First year, right? So. Yeah, I, I think Two Rivers had a little bit more say in the area that we chose just because it was, I don't want to say, kind of low hanging fruit, I guess. Um, there was drainage issue. There were, there were all sorts of issues on the road. It wasn't just one thing. So um, I think moving forward, we'll, we'll, look at it as a whole and just try to figure out which road you know has the most need based off of a lot of factors uh, we haven't established those factors i i haven't yet um, this one was just kind of a first year deal I'll just kind of fill it out see how it goes i think part of the hydrological um, connected issues also plays into rating on on streams isn't there some rating related to which bodies of water are being affected um, not in the... It's just whether or not it's, whether or not that water from those ditches goes directly in. Right, the, uh, which is probably 80, 90 percent, who knows, it's just a large number, yeah. you're right. Um, but uh, as far as the stream, a scoring mechanism or a score for the stream, I'm not aware of anything yeah, like I, that. I just yeah. wondered whether that was part of what Two Rivers brought here. No. Now, we just on this one, we saw that we'd spend a lot of time on it, we saw that the, um, the grade and the amount of water coming down the hill was causing erosion enough that it was eating away the bank. The guardrail was failing, so there were a lot of moving pieces or a lot of aspects to it that needed to be taken care of before we had a huge loss. How's it being taken up in that neighborhood? Oh, it's How's fine. I, I mean, I, I only noticed because I was coming down four corners and went to the left. Mm -hmm. no, no. There's just not a ton of activity up there, as far as I can tell. Yeah. From, from a population standpoint. Yeah, it's like, yeah. It's unless, like yeah. It, it, but there was two years ago when they were rebuilding 107, right. there were 18 wheelers going up over Music Mountain and coming down Dart Hill. It, had, it, had we not done what we're doing now, there was a very high likelihood that after we rebuilt the ditch and put the guardrail back up, it would have failed again. Mm -hmm. Because there was significant grade coming down with absolutely no uh, energy dissipation whatsoever in the ditch 
coming down to an undersized culvert and then just shooting out in the road. There was a ditch that, that was cut probably five feet now. Right. And where that discharge was right at this, in this abutment for this bridge, and it had all just the road away. <laughs> it was gone. So it, it, had we not done what we did, had, did I think it would have just been a band-aid on a bad situation. Right, so. completely agree with Because I noticed if you continue and go down Music Mountain, the permafrost issue there is quite severe, actually. And that road, I've seen people get uh, trapped on that, that flat when you come up over the hill and then come down, that flat um, before Loose Farm. Yeah. Uh, where there's a real, there is another drainage problem, and I think that's all probably wetlands yeah. or something. But it's, it's still Bethel property, isn't it? No, that's Stockbridge. Is that Stockbridge? Yeah, it's, it's mm -hmm. Stockbridge. Bethel Line is right there before Dick Luna's um, garage. Got it. Well, again, I mean, it is the first first official yeah. year of Bethel yeah. Fund, so. You know, would, I think to your point, that it would be nice to have a, a real defined methodology to try to decide what, what to choose. You know, we're, we're going to pull from from everywhere we can to try to come up with the, the right answer. For does sure. that money go towards material or does it go towards labor? Everything. 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 So, yeah. Because, I mean, as far as material goes, you're talking about culverts or stone. So, mm -hmm. I mean. It goes to equipment, it goes to everything. So, the total cost of the project, we have to pay 10%, and the other 90% gets reimbursed to us. So, if we subbed it out or we do it ourselves, it, it's a 90 10 split. And to be honest with you, if you look at the report, that stuff was in the report to be done eventually anyway. So it's, it's almost paying us back for things that we wouldn't be doing anyway. Now it might change the schedule a little bit, but, but those, are, those are the types of things that- And it allows us to spend the money on that material in that location at this time, instead of saying, well, that's good enough we got to move on, we got this right. budget to work on. But, but, it, but to use proper engineering methods and to do things right, we all know that we have to still land a ditch when the grade is extreme. We need to have culverts that are adequately sized. We need to pitch a road the right way, things like that. So those are things we're doing anyway, that we need to be doing. And this just allows us $20,000 more than we didn't have before. This is also putting us in line with X64. Yeah, the stormwater general yeah, permit. It's the water right. quality. Yeah, yeah. stormwater so general permit. In, that's another that. fun thing we're dealing with. But this is kind of a, this is sort of the funding mechanism for that, I think. Yes. Great. Anything um, else on your end? Pool's open. Go swimming when it warms up. It's a little chilly today. It's a little chilly, yeah. Kids but, didn't know, say we're having a great day. Okay. So, any, uh, any, any things at the rec facility wise, uh, things prior? Yeah, I think we're doing good. I, like I said, today is the first day. Um, we will be purchasing a vacuum. We kind of already purchased it, but we will be purchasing a vacuum for the pool. So thank you. Um, it's badly needed. That pool, it's, it's pretty nasty. It was pretty nasty. So no, we're excited. I'm excited to get that, um, that facility up and going and, and hope everybody comes out and checks out all the new programming that we have going on out there. Friday nights with Family Swim. We've got fantastic programming. Uh, pirate night, and a luau night, and all sorts of stuff. It's going to be really fun. So come on out. Yeah. Sounds good. Um, we'll be bringing you a fee schedule. Uh, Kelly's been working on putting together a fee schedule, a town-wide fee schedule. So instead of having these pieces here and there of, of fees assessed for things that we provide, uh, we're going to have just a fee schedule that has all the fees on it. And you can approve that every year, so it's kind of a one-stop shopping kind of a thing. So I'm hoping to have that to you at the next meeting. And you have agreed to serve as the alternate to the board, the Two Rivers Board. Yes. And yes. you need the board select the select board to appoint you. Okay. I'll get that on you. Then. I'm moving. We do it right now. Do I do it right now? Yeah. I move that we uh, appoint Greg as the alternative to the uh, Two Rivers. Second. All there. Hi. Hi. Thanks for doing that. Yeah. Well, um, if there's no questions, that's, that's all I got. Um, Can I ask you a question? No. Oh, dang it. Um, so I noticed that the, the, tr the speed study is ongoing uh -huh. in downtown, mm -hmm. and that's two rivers, right? That is. 
Do you know or do we get any say about how they do that or are they doing that and we get no say? Um, I think we could have a little input if you had something in mind. Um, yeah, so basically where they've put them, it's sort of near the hardware store and then um, just past the Levere block. Mm -hmm. And so they're in just this one stretch of <laughs> the downtown, but we have a, a much longer stretch of 25 miles an hour. And I think that people actually slow down in that stretch because of the cars parked along the side, but where they where they're still going quickly, coming in or out of town, you know, going out this curve, people tend to pick up speed going over the bridge, and it's, it's still 25. I think if we want an accurate assessment of really how people are interacting with that full 25 mile an hour section, you know, and they, they may be planning to do this. They started at those two spots, and I was right. just sort of curious, were they going to I, kind of bump them out incrementally and, and So why we, why we're installing these here, I talked to them about that, and they, I asked them, you know, can we do a speed study town-wide? They said, we really can't do it town-wide, but we have, I think they said, three sets of these speed sensors. Mm -hmm. And they said, we'd be willing to put them wherever you want. Okay. They can do them so on dirt roads, paved the roads, day. anywhere we want them. I think they're willing to do that. We just we need to probably definitely know. want something from Church Street, you know, to Pleasant Street. Yeah. To, to get sure. Out. Because that's where the fast traffic flows. I think really what Absolutely. we maybe do is we just figure out where... <laughs> where we want them, right. and they're willing to accommodate okay. us. So we, we can kind of add sure. 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 That's yep. what I was curious about. Because yep. that probably would be a good, good area. I mean, that's, that's yeah. where we've been seeing most of our speed issues. Right. right. No, I think, I think anywhere we want to go. Anywhere we want to go. Cool. Dirt roads, paved roads. Yeah. Well, we've right. talked about <laughs> sort of using this as an assessment of what we're going to do with the speed mm -hmm. through the village, but I think that that 25 mile an hour zone is much larger than it's being collected currently. And so I, I feel like we'd be kicking ourselves in the butt if we did. Sure. No, we could we look back, back at it later and say, yeah. oh yeah, everybody was going 18 miles an hour through that little quarter, right. but they are actually going 35, I'll just say, around that bend. So. Yeah. I, I come down and sit here for an hour before our meetings, and, and probably 50% of the people are going faster than 25 miles. I was going to say, oh, yeah. we get a couple that are going over 50s, but if yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, right out here, we come tickets. Yeah. Yeah. Just here in the bridge. Well, why don't you, why don't the board is, as individuals, just think about what areas you might be interested in, let me know, and I can share it. I, they told me they have three or four of those things, and they're willing to let us have all of them at one time. Okay. Well, I know the stretch from the bridge down to GW Plastics is a, a high area. So yeah. That's probably We're also point. looking at, at a digital sign out there, too. So uh, Mark is, has done some uh, DUI enforcement, and he gets some grant funds for that. So one of the things we talked about was doing some more digital signs. Uh, one being somewhere out there by the, the school um, and then somewhere else, but uh, probably a, a couple of fixed location signs and then a couple like we have now that we can move from position to position based on what he's seeing. What's the speed limit for on Avenue Street? 25. 25. So do you want to lower that speed limit on Main Street? Thank you. No, I, I'll tell you what, what you're thinking is logical, but it's not how the speed study works. If you want to increase the speed from 25 to 20 or whatever in that area on Main Street, then they're in the perfect spot because you need people going slower. Because if you move your counters and what happens is the data shows that people are going 35 to 40, then you won't have the data to reduce the speed. Right. It'll, it'll be, they'll say actually you have data to say you should increase your speed. So if you're, if you're wanting to desire is to reduce the speed just on Main Street, then they're in a good spot because people are going slower, so you could probably have the data to lower that section. Right. Because we did this, show we the did people not, are we wanted to lower the speed limit, mm -hmm. and, and, they and we couldn't because people yeah. were coming so quickly yeah. going over some, every time I drove over them, I would creep over them to try to offset the speeder. But in the end, they said, uh, you could raise your speed limit, but you can't lower it. So it really, mm -hmm really need to think carefully to, to manipulate the data to get the result. You kind of need to raise spots But if the study is done that. right here in the immediate village, uh -huh. then if we, you know, if they did get the information on it, they wouldn't allow us to adjust the whole speed zone all the way up to... Well, that's hard to, yeah. Because it's, it's all one speed zone, you know, from... Yeah, right. But right, but they might let you... From the, right town, from the town office yeah. all the way to GW Classics is one speed zone. Right, but, I'm but there's but there's different there's different streets, and each street has its own speed zone. Right. 
Right. So the speed zone right here on Main Street goes from Spalding to the town hall. Right. And then it's North Main Street and then it's Pleasant or Church Street. So those are, you can yeah. you can alter so, so, you can yeah. alter in every section. To your point, because part of what part of what they use is the average speed because they think if people are doing that speed, they consider that a safe speed to go. And so that's they could actually raise your speed limit. Mm-hmm. It's a weird deal. But yeah, I, I've been in there was a place in Colorado where I came from where they actually asked for the same study yeah. and the state raised their speed limit by ten. And they wanted it lower. Because that's what people can in their minds they safely can go that speed. Yeah. And they are, so that's one of the pieces that they put into it. So, <laughs> so to, to Teresa's point, let's if you wanna we want low numbers if the intent is to lower the speed limit. Right. We want numbers that are indicative of that. Right. Well and it would be interesting to like what Carl is saying if, if we look at it by what the actual zones are currently maybe do almost these little mini studies of each zone yeah. so this is one study and then yeah. church street is another right you know between because i hate to, offices and spalding hate to do a full small thing and it, it comes back at 35 and the state goes well you yeah. need to raise it to 35. Right. has anybody so, had any other uh, comments in regards to the bump outs lately i know we had some initial reactions and i haven't really heard anything since but it's really slowed down the office so, i think yeah. i haven't heard much one of the things that i <laughs> One of the things that I wanted to say about this study is, it, it, I don't know how those work, but are they are they trying to measure uh, how long it takes the flow of traffic to leave that zone? No. I mean, it's why would you have one? Uh, why would you have maybe? Because they if can if, if, if twenty they cars can. come in and only ten cars go out yeah. for fifteen minutes or an hour, mm-hmm. you get a you can create. Uh, data that shows the lag time that vehicles are actually resting in the downtown area, presumably in a parking space doing business. I, I think the intent of the study is simply to see what the speed Between of the Between those two bracketed areas. Yes. Uh, the speed and the density. Through there. The speed and the yeah, it'll be your counts and it, and it calculates the speed, but it's at those two fixed points. Speed. It's not right. necessarily going to tell you what yeah. the speed is. The other is just to the middle. Right. It's just at those two in, kind right. of entry Being points. Being that they're yeah. so close together, but those entry areas. points are too close. Yeah. Like, you'll see some. I think is what you're trying to say. Well, n- yeah, yeah, not so much that they're too close. Too close just side, I don't think it gives us the full picture of all of what we're intending to look at. Right, it just gives us this one section that is unique from other sections. But we're not and looking for a speed study. We're not looking for people that are speeding necessarily. We're looking for no. what is the speed. Right. And I mean, one one thought that I feel like we've tossed around was even doing more like a village speed. So, you know, out Church and Pleasant and, and further out this way would actually stay 25, but then dropping right. what's, you know, in the actual village for pedestrians, right. for, you know, parked cars, traffic, things like that. So that, you know, what Teresa's saying, that could actually benefit us if yeah. people really are going slowly. My, my second point to that would be, I wonder how Two Rivers quantifies the data because people go insane speeds at night. I mean, I'm, I'm out on the street at night all the time here, just walking the dog or whatever, and the speeds through town at 11 p.m. are completely different than the speeds at 10 a.m. So I think we just use the data for whatever it is. Right. No, and, but and if, I think if it's they in, break it up by they're not, there is no way that they can quantify the speed between the two fixed points because they, they never measure the distance or anything. So it's just, yeah. what's the speed here? What's the speed here? Yeah. Um, and I think the, I, I go, I know what you understand, I understand what you're saying. At, right. at, at night, the speeds go way up. So that right. could possibly skew that average speed. Right. And if they're able to pull out what that looks like. Right. And, and they can. That, that, okay. that is yeah. all there. And it shows the time and the speed and, Great. Yeah. and all that. But as far as in between the two, there's no there's no map that can be done right. saying that in between these two fixed points this is what the speed looks because they, they right. I mean I guess we could I don't think you could no, there's no way <laughs> but, but, there's no. but because they've placed them sort of where they have it you know not quite the ends of the village but you know mm-hmm. sort of bracketing that we we could potentially use that data if it if it showed that people were sort of forced to slow down through that section during the day when there are parked cars and more pedestrians it could it could benefit us if we were going to try is to Rita drop in, that speed. In, sure. Is Rita in charge of that? Yeah. yeah so yeah. maybe it would be good to just engage yeah, with it. I think we can use it as for whatever we want to use it for. Yeah. We just got to get it collected and, and go. And we can keep these out. Maybe we, we revisit this whenever um, when those bump outs go away mm-hmm. and just yeah. see what we have. Do it again. See what it looks like with and without. Because that was the original intent and they just couldn't make it out here to, 
to get them put in before to gather that data. Yeah, cool. Anybody have a chance to review the constables' reports? A lot of dog activity. I was going to say a lot more animal activity. Only one speeder this time, but there's a lot of uh, dog complaints, checkups. Yeah. At least there's no escaped sheep. Or chickens in the river. Yeah. <laughs> and we had that last year. Yeah. Yeah, it's a it good. Um, Never mind. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of those stories you don't hear. One of those. It does happen. Okay. Any comments on constable activity? Mm -hmm. Doing a good job. You no, know, maybe it's just me. I usually see him quite a bit. I hadn't seen him quite as much here in the last week or two. I don't know. Maybe I'm just missing him. He's on vacation, I think. He's hanging out. I thought he told me he had to go somewhere for. He's yeah, going once there. He was there was a dog in a car incident, but uh, yeah, I, th I think he's out. Going to be out for about a week. He's going. Uh, he's either going to a training class or he's going on vacation. Okay. Going to be out, but don't tell me. Anybody have a chance to review the select board minutes? <laughs> Waiting for the hell of this. <laughs> then we have the uh, committee meeting. Committee meeting minutes. Um, the rec committee is in there, as well as the conservation committee and the solid waste. Joint board being a part of the right, yeah, okay, and based on based on the area that we I think there may have been some right, areas. three of us felt that we could utilize that area within the next 20 years, then okay, and replacement would be <clears throat> more than we're getting from it. And there were some notes in here about the audit report, yeah. Okay. That. Chet didn't hand out the uh, report until our meeting, so we really didn't have a chance to look at all. Okay. I did go over the right. financials with them, and I did go over their um, the audit findings, just like Fred was talking about, talking about that. Um, and I answered any of the questions that they had about the financials. Um, so I was able to get all the financials that they had in the past, so I'd already handled those issues and um, went through again the explanation of the due to be strong. Any, I know in the past, one 
of the feedback from the joint board was, or from the facility, was not getting the financial information when they needed it in a timely manner. Does that seem like that's corrected now? That's corrected. No more yeah. issue with that. We're getting, once a month, we're getting our, uh, our report from the trees. Yeah, they have the budget staff for a copy of their um, bank account. Uh, that has been a concern for a royal uh, BRTS member. So they could actually see their money a better about it, I guess. So, so we can certainly take care of that as pretty well. Much just like a, a checkbook balance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because now that they've got their own account, it's close. They can see it. Does anybody, uh, in regards to the rent committee, um, where, where they're at in regards to the skate park right now? I know they were. So, back so the skate park redesigning is that what they're doing? Um, the, the, yeah. So the skate park has has gone through a lot of refinement, I guess, um, by people that are very passionate about it. Um, last I heard, the budget was somewhere close to two hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars. So it got me thinking. <laughs> yeah. Better be looking. Yeah, that isn't. Any, yeah. Anywhere where so it got me thinking, uh, Teresa and I, th thinking a little bit about uh, back when they put together, when the, when the town voted to uh, create, the town voted to create the, uh, the facility, what's it called, facility maintenance? The recreation fund. Recreation right. fund, that, that fund, um, and, and start funding that fund. Um, we looked back and, and found that uh, at town meeting in 2012, I think it was, that fund was, was created. And there was an initial payment made to that fund. Um, and every year since, there have been payments made to that fund. Um, but there's not any evidence of there ever being a, a, an allocation or anything approved by the, the board as to how much of those funds are actually going to go to the skate park. Yeah. The language in the yeah, fund, well, the, the language in the fund talks about op, talks about maintenance, operation and maintenance of the facility. It doesn't say it's for the skate park. We have we a, some direction. I don't think. No, we have a. I, I'll have to. So, I'll so I'm going to keep going with this because we have a budget that we voted on. Did we vote on it, or did we just give direction? We were going to keep it under a hundred. We, right, we had we had an eighty thousand dollar budget that we broke it out, and part of that was to get a thirty thousand uh, dollar allotment to that rec fund that that year, which we did, which yeah. was a year before you arrived, mm -hmm. and that was that allotment was based on that eighty thousand dollar skate park budget. So, eighty thousand dollars for the total project, or for the town's part of that. Because they're, they're, if you ask certain people on that board, they feel that they have $90,000 in the bank waiting for them in that fund. And I cannot find anywhere where anybody has said, okay, the town has approved, the board has approved allocation of $90,000 or $30,000 or whatever. Yeah, and part of that was um, in kind. Um, this issue is going to come it, up. Part of it was in kind from a highway department or you know, okay. road crew, well, whatever. Our, our our own cost. We were going to part of the allotment was was not cash. So what I'm looking for is somewhere some number that says the board has approved a, an allocation from that fund to the skate park of something, some number. Because right now the board feel the board being the rec board feel that they the the balance of that fund is all skate park, and I don't know if that's the intent of the, of because there's like ninety ninety thousand dollars is that I would agree that that is that is what the because that's I, not the way the language was written whenever they opened the fund up. That's right. No, I know, uh, but it's but it clearly has been over the last several years that money that's in there now has been uh, presented to the voters and um, discussed through the select board as allocations for the skate park. The, the options at the recreational facility went before the voters what, six December. years ago. Uh, the, the, warning for the, the warning to fund the account 
just says, do you want to fund it? Do you want to put 30,000 there? No, it doesn't at say that time, they had, we had different examples. There was two or three, or there two or three examples of, the Recreation Committee had done extensive time and went through three, I believe it was three. Yeah, there's a rec master plan. There were, there were yeah. three proposals that they had put out there to mm -hmm. the voters to vote on, and the voters picked one of the three. So the voters actually voted on that? It's not yes. You reviewed the minutes. Yeah, it was 2017. Yeah. yeah. They, they voted on the, they voted on the uh, master plan for it, <coughs> and then that plan shows the stages in which they're going to do things, and, and part of what was already done over there, we were able to do with some of the FEMA alternate funds, but Those are there, different things. there's different things in there, and I think, you know, I might. We looked at the way we skate park was never in the master plan. The skate park came after, right? Yeah. But I, I think it was a combination of the, the funds that were putting, what we allotted to put into that fund was based upon the plan that was put in front of the town. But then the skate park came in as kind of an addendum to that. If I remember right. Also, Cardi did his presentation like yeah. two years ago, two years ago. Yeah. and requested that the town put in, a, I forget what the exact figure was. So when the it was voted on, it was discussed and it was yeah. on the town meeting right. that we would put that chunk of money in there. So, that was the, 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 the big issue that's going to arise is there needs to be a definitive number that the board has approved that will that that comes out of that fund and goes to the skate park right and because that's where we left it the last time was that they were going to that there were four or five people there that they were going to with this new approach they were going to come back to the board with their proposed um budget and they're going to come up against the expectations that the board already laid out. I, I have a feeling. Yeah, because they're, they're going to be coming back to you with a significantly different yeah. and more expensive plan, thinking they have a, a $90,000, whatever it is, yeah. in an account waiting for them. And I just want to make sure that that is truly the case. The total amount that we were looking at two years ago, or a year and a half ago, was in the eighty dollars to $100,000 area. Exactly. But there was no total project, though, right? Total budget. Yeah. And that was broken down. There was he the three, income right. he gave us three. portion of the town that was, a, you know, whatever. He it gave us like $15,000 or $16,000, $18,000 worth. There was the, um, the, there was the recreational um, fund portion. There was the um, black tie dinner um, that they did. There were some other different things. So uh, there was a Tony Hawk, Scott, the Tony Hawk grant. Yeah, so there was multiple pieces to there. that. We, it was all laid out on a piece of paper for us. So you would charge them? They had, they knew that they had X amount of dollars that they had to fundraise. They came to us a year and a yeah. half ago, I believe. We, Should be in the minutes. They came well, across. They had two proposals minutes. that they gave us on skateboard parts. Two proposals, if I remember right. And one was one was somewhere in the eighty thousand dollar area. The mm -hmm. other one was in the hundred and something thousand. And I don't know if we voted on it, but I know we gave them some direction on sticking in the eighty thousand dollar bracket, not higher. Because a lot of this hinged on the Tony Hawk grant, which was like five thousand dollars. No, it was more than that that they had they were looking right, at they had penciled like twenty five in there. Right. And then they only got five of it. So you do the math if you're at eighty thousand and you just lost twenty of it, where you had that sixty, right? So not higher. Well, you're trying to research this when, you, when the fund was started, the voters approved a fund for a specific reason. Yep. And after reading the warrants after that, you were still allocating money was being voted, but nowhere in your warning when people were voting did it say that it said thirty thousand dollars was going to this recreation fund. It did not say thirty thousand was going to the skate park to nope. be allocated. Right. So obviously it's a capital fund. Select board has the right to, mm -hmm. to say that, but I guess if we're going to do that in the future, I think we need to be clear in, our, in the warning itself and say if we're going to put 30000 in, how much is your market for the skate park and how much is going for pool maintenance? Like when the pump dies, right. do we have money to replace the or pump? Or for the next there? project or whatever. The original yeah. intent of the fund that we started not solely for the skate park. So but, I was just, so Greg and me, we were trying to work it out together going, 
and I piece together history and right. find it in the minutes, and we, and we were we, we were unsuccessful in finding. I mean, and I think the intent was to fund the the rec master plan as a whole. Right. So what we're what I'm concerned about here is, are we going to It'll take all those funds that are in that, that, that fund and give them all to the skate park? If so, I just, I need to know. Um, or, or, or does that max out? Because I don't know what's actually in the fund, but if you look at the, the appropriations that have been made over the years, I think it comes up to $90,000. So I need some clarification from the board as to how much of that $90,000 is actually meant to go to right. the skate park. Well, I can tell you it's not 90. It, no. It's, you know, it, it's not 90. But I mean, the, the, intent of the, the intent of the money in that fund is for the grand scheme of things. The master plan, yes. And the skateboard park is one piece of this whole puzzle. Uh, and if we... Carl, I need you to find in your imminent wisdom that date when you guys said this I'm much. I'm looking for yeah. digging. If I had to guess, I guarantee I'll find it. Of that money, I want to say 50. Was I'm just trying to figure out. You came in July of 2017. June. June, June. 2017. So we about town the meeting of 2000. So March. town meeting of 2017. We voted on that. So the oh, Corey must have been in the fall of <coughs> would have been December or 16. he came. Would have been in the fall of 2016 to come to the rec center, rec committee. Yeah. So, so you think we need to be looking in 2017? No, you want to be looking in, in the end of two, it'll be budget season for 2016. Okay. And you'd be looking in agendas for appointments. Appointments for recreation committee. Right. Okay. Well, we'll keep looking. Yeah, so that's helpful. At least now we have a time frame. We've been searching. I'll have to go years. through my. I might have that home somewhere. If you uh, do, that would be great. There was there a great proposed sheet. skate park at the center. There was December, a breakdown sheet that they gave us. December 7, 2016. Um, I, uh, I just think it would is. be. Here it is. Uh, Parker Construction, $140,000, dollars 25 for town. Uh, uh, this is narrowing down on, uh, yeah, this is the breaking down what the town would provide, what Parker Construction would provide. Um, this is an agreement. Where are you at? What's the date? 12, 12, 16. 12, 12, 16. And this is in the packet, the select board packet. So was there, you're looking at, do you have the minutes there too? Um, this is, no, I'm not going to do okay. minutes. Because uh, this, I mean. this was the proposal <clears throat> that we then, so there's option, there's three options, option A, B, and C, all with different price structures. This is very detailed. And this is what we kicked back to them to come back to us with um, with a specific, because we weren't interested in the $110,000 state We were talking about $80,000 was the... So it would be sometime between 12, 12, 16, and... Three, seven, yeah. and seventeen, somewhere in there, because they came back to us um, with that broke down, broken down budget, and we uh, probably didn't vote on it, but that was guidance that we were we working with, because we came up with a thirty thousand dollar. We agreed to put a thirty thousand dollar allotment into the mm -hmm. into the the agenda for the two thousand seventeen. Select uh, town meeting, and it was specifically for the skate park. Carl, can you forward that to Greg, that packet or whatever? That way, because I don't think we have that. You don't have packets? Yeah, we. I don't know. That time frame, first 12, 12, 16. I'll have to look. I'll look back. I'll I. Look back. Can I you? Was, well, I was wondering what I should do with these. 
<laughs> Give it to me. Give it to me. I will. I'll go. So, so the question, the, the question is then, if if nothing was ever officially really voted on by the board, would you be comfortable with me talking about setting some some number that you can then approve so that everybody involved knows what they're working with? Because I don't know how the rec committee's even trying to get a budget for this when they have no idea how much the town's no, going to they, get. No, they've gone, this has been, the, the whole point was um, we had a, a rough figure based on these plans of what a budget was like. We told them to go back, um, we would get the funding from the town, from the town meeting for the $30,000. The town would c connect in with its in kind, they were going to go do some fundraising, and they were going to come back to us with a final plan that was going to be somewhere in the $110,000 range or something like that, or maybe $80,000. With dollars. a maximum town but, but, they, but the last two years, that final plan has been amorphous. Right. And now it's grown again to 200 some odd thousand dollars. Yeah. And um, so we're still waiting for them to come back to us with a final proposal for us to vote on. And that would be, I think, if this is where they're coming back, then they have to understand that, that everything's still in play. So in your opinion, there's only $30,000 that was appropriated specifically for the skate park? Between, between what we were going to put in the fund and the income, it was around 50 grand. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. But, the cash is but, thirty. But, the, but that dedicated thirty thousand dollars was was bolstered by the interest in the skate park. Right. But it, it, I don't think it was earmarked. It was recreation fund. Right. Yeah. And it was and it was presented to the voters that this is where these thirty thousand dollars would go because it's part of the rec center. Right. But um, no, there hasn't ever been any any kind of an agreement that. I mean, it's kind, of, it's kind of the same way as the, you know, like the capital improvement fund. We, we designate money to the fund, but we haven't said that that money is going to the town. It's right. going to the new town office or you right. know, something like that. It's Which is okay. The fund that will be Except you've got, a, you've got a committee that's working on the assumption that all that money's theirs. And they're trying to, they're trying to you get the most bang for the buck. With, kind of a committee. The committee so, is kind of more they do, they've done this before. Um, then the rec committee, every committee in town that the select board appoints is the select board's of committee. Mm -hmm. So while they can talk with you um, and engage with you, don't, you don't need to get distracted by, by that. that. They should be coming directly to the select board. Right? Sure. So, yeah, yeah. I, I just, I'm going to come to the next, their next meeting because they're, they, there's just some things that are happening that... Why don't you invite them to our next meeting? I can do that. And we'll yeah. just check in to see where they're at, and, and we can talk about kind of where, where we think budget the budget should be. be yeah. That way they don't put a lot of time into something that, you know, we're going to tell them to cut. Because we have a master plan at the rec center, and if we're just going to keep spending time trying to build a utopian skate park, what's going to happen to our temp... Our Tennis rack, a tennis well, court. We talked about exactly. like, the green field and space. And yeah, there's all kinds of things that okay. could be well, moving forward. I know, yeah. but there's uh, stuff that could I will invite them to discuss um, the status of the, the skate park. Yeah. yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Adam. Yeah. I was just wondering for, for disciplinary purposes, is there not an exploding date when the stuff has to be executed or goes away? Why are you carrying this liability, this asset, which is not your asset? on your books and these people are dragging their feet, now the project has completely changed. I mean, how long, how long is it supposed to be open? Yeah, that's well, what we were just talking about. It. Yeah, there isn't any, there isn't anything like that, but we could. There isn't, and the only thing they have is a, a for one of the grants, or Tony Hawk grant, right. they have a timeline for that, but I, but as far as. But we could. But you can't, the liability, you're, you're right, the asset's there, but it's not even, there's never been anything official that says, that we have, that those funds are even allocated to that use. So I, re I remember when they pitched this, yeah. and, and the Tony Hawk grant was a big part of it, and that came in far below expectations. Mm -hmm. The project, quite frankly, should have been scaled down at that point, not scaled up. <laughs> right. well, we, exactly, you know, that's what we're having this conversation about. about. The kids that made that very emotional pitch, and I think yeah. they're in college now. So, yeah. you know, uh, yeah. I mean, it, at what point does the town that's faced serious changes in its own fiscal position, 
fishing, mm -hmm. go back and say, you know, fish are cut. Hey, they, they were this here. is what you have. Right. And, they you were got, here. and you got two months to deliver something real, or we have to allocate that money something. I think, and maybe that's a conversation for that's exactly one what they, I mean, when they we were here two the months ago, and we didn't get, I mean, we didn't get any. We just got more ideas of how, I, in scope, how it was changing, but there wasn't any. Talk what has happened is two people have take, kind of taken over that the control of that board, and they are skaters, and it has turned into this huge regional skate park thing now. And huh. it should be regional expense. <laughs> it, That's you know, not going to happen. But, but the other thing that you know, it maybe it will be good to have a talk with them because, I mean, we're allocating funds for the master plan, not for the skate park initially. But there are other things that, you know, maybe we do put a timeline to the skate park. But there are other steps in this process that could be going on too. We could be talking about the tennis courts or something else that should be going in as well. Great. I know in perfect world, when they had made the pitch that they were going to start construction of the state skateboard park this spring, yeah. would have been, that was the timeline that they were looking at. So they are over the timeline, you know, not by a lot. It's not like it's two years down the road, but I know when they came to us that the spring of 18 was when they were looking yeah. to break ground. All we did was agree, we happen. agreed conceptually about the idea of the skate park and that yeah. we were willing to contribute some funds to the town, but it was going to be a Bethel scale skate park. It was going to be something that would fit our budget related to recreation development and truthfully, you know, we can't have it be that, that rec facility has already gone from being the pool to being a recreation facility. We don't need it to turn into the, the skate park. I mean, there's too many other things so over there that could be happening. I think a meeting to clarify all that is hugely important. Yeah. To clarify the budget, to clarify the timeline, I think everything. I think it's, that's a, that would yeah. be I a huge... I guess we'd have to go back and see what, what it was that, um, that Corey brought to town meeting. Did he go? You had it right there. It's right here. Did, it's basically. At town meeting, it. did he have different options for the skate park, or did yeah. he? Have, yeah. Or did he yeah. have the one that we had talked to him? About? No, he's got the same huge PowerPoint right here. I, he had this, the the. But did the did the voters vote on one specific? It wasn't um, a vote. It was back, it was just so, information. Okay. The only vote was on the thirty thousand. So you didn't actually vote on the master plan no. itself. No. Okay. So the select board approved the master plan in 2013. Okay, so I think there was a survey done. The master plan did like not even include a skate park. Oh, okay. <laughs> but yeah. the, voters, the voters gave authorization to a skate park. No. No? Wasn't that? that it was wasn't warned that way. It was warned, are you going to fund this account? That's it. Yeah. That's it. So as far as the... The skate park came as a, an addition to the master plan in probably in, four, in 15, 14, 15. We had, as Adam said, there were, or maybe um, Derek said it, we had some, some, at the time, middle school or young high school kids came directly to the select board with a petition talking about the, the interest in having a skateboard park be part of the recreation master plan. And um, we tasked the recreation committee with finding out what that would be, what that would entail, and it's taken all this time. So being that, I'm just trying to wrap my head. So I'm not sure that we even approved a skate park necessarily, but we acknowledged that there was room for more going on at the, because we had originally in the master plan a multi-purpose building that actually had to be stricken from the plan because of restrictions on the, the easement with the conservation water fund. And when that happened, then there was the opening for more uh, potential other, other um, infrastructure down there. So being that the, uh, uh, so the voters, the voters approved the master plan for No. No, the select no, board. No, the voters approved the initial to recreational to set up the facility account. plan. To, yeah, the, the fund. The fund. The fund. No, they never, the voters never approved the The select board 
approve the master plan. Right. They approved the fund. Did the voters vote on one of the plans? Remember the plans they used to have? They had two or three of them and no. they never voted I don't on think, them. I don't think we voted on them. We just just the no, 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 he's talking about the master plan. No, no, I'm not talking about the state plan. The master plan had master plan. The master plan. Master plan had three iterations. Yeah. And um, there were. It wasn't a vote. It was a, a poll mm -hmm. at town meeting and at um, even maybe at Forward Festival. There was a poll and. There was a poll that talked about elements, years. right? It talked about elements. What elements do you want to see? Right. And then they sent that to the designers, and then they came back with three, I think, three options. Yeah, but it was never voted on. And people were able to file past the options, and they, and they made... Did the board vote on it eventually? Well, on we, the we master plan, right? We approved right? The, the right. version C the, or B. The, or the townspeople have, have simply voted on to establish the fund and to fund that fund. And the language to establish the fund doesn't say anything about building any capital improvements at all, really. <coughs> it's, uh, it's maintenance and operation, I think. So that's where it's, it, it's, it's just hard to kind of really get your hands around. And, and now that I'm hearing that the rec board, rec, they feel that you know, the, the whole of that account balance is theirs to use, I, I don't know if I think that that's the intent. No, it's, no, the, the fund is, um, as you say, for the, it's a budget placeholder in the, um, in the budget for the recreation facility. Right, the master plan. We, yeah. we specifically said that if they wanted to have town funds contribute to the development of the skate park, that it, to the tune of $30,000, we would ask the voters that year to put the money in um, with the idea that it would be available for the skate park. So, so, so I think that it's more in the lines of so $30,000 plus the 20 or something. So we of should it. circle back with them in regards to the initial budget. Yeah. yeah. If they want to go above Because those funds, that, those they, funds they are there to for the, to fix the pool, to pay for put pavement on the parking lot. Right. Or to possibly put a tennis course yeah. down the road. Anything. So at some point, the board is going to have to come up and if, approve a if, number. If the board, when the board says skate park, X number of dollars, boom, we approve it, then that money is earmarked for that. Right. But at this point, we have all we've okay. agreed on is. But I think the consensus with the town is they're okay with having a piece of the recreational facility over there to be a skate park. Absolutely. But even if Tony Hawk himself walked in tonight and said, here's a half a million dollars. The intent is not to go build a half million dollar skate park, Absolutely. right? It's to build a small skate park and to work on the other green space so ideas. We, this is kind of not off the subject, but more or less food for thought. We just lost our high school, right? How many kids do you see riding skateboards up and down the sidewalks? Do you see them looking for a place to ride their skateboards? So I have a two-year-old. Where am I supposed to take her to play? the skate park, <laughs> you know? I mean, we, that's we, what we're all, that's what we're all, that's what we're all thinking about. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 think, know, I know we're all on the same page here, mm -hmm. but if you're such a narrow window of kids that want to ride a skate park, you could probably build a skate park half the size of this town all in cafe. Costume that's all we're brand. that's all we're looking at that's, exactly that's all yeah. that's all we were ever looking at i will set up a meeting with them so we can discuss all these issues yeah. and hopefully everybody i think we're just on separate pages and i think right. at this point it doesn't matter what the budget is we want a skate park why can't they use the circle. pool during the season when we don't have water <laughs> well, i haven't been to I'm, I'm going to the next <laughs> meeting it's, kind of like it's, 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 it's become this huge and it's it's head by these two kids that are well I know, there, I know there are a lot of people concerned yeah. and i continue to hear it concerned uh, about the green space down there yes and well i just hear a lot about the need for or other things some people want to see a basketball court. court some people want to see the tennis yeah. balls that were part of the plan yeah. but aren't they? you know uh, so they're, they're, they need to meet with you. They definitely need to meet with you because they've also, one of the other things, they, you know, we paid 5000 for this Spawn Ranch to do a design. Well, they've gone away from that design and they're using somebody else who knows AutoCAD. They're not. Why? 
They, they're not they professionals in the field, but they can use AutoCAD. This is this is the part where the board needs to rein in their committee. Yes. Because the committee is serving at the behest of the select board. They need to be checking in with the select board and following procedures. It can't just be. Um, I mean, I don't mind if they if they don't want to use Spawn Ranch, but they can't ask us to fund that and then not right. and then change. Change. Gears. I will put them on the agenda for for July 9th, and if I can make it happen. Yeah, that's good. Okay. okay. I got a question for you, Greg. Yeah. They they wrote a grant, a AARP grant for something. Did you write that with them? No. How can they write grants? That's a good question. There's a lot of grants being written that I'm not really involved okay, in. Okay, but I mean, a, a committee has got to go through either you or the select board to write a grant. Right, right. So why are they writing a grant? That's because they're moving ahead, asking for permit, or asking for forgiveness and not for permission. Yeah, exactly. Under this, this guise of being a town affiliated, which they are, but, but no, you're right. And that's something that Teresa and I have talked about, is that all these grants that are being written by all these these committees, that should all funnel through Well, maybe us. we ought to be sending a notice out that they can't well, do this. Well, I think I just need to participate in these a little more than I have been. You're going to get a grant management. All right. Yeah. <laughs> this, is what I, this is what I have. I did find it. Current, current funds available, $30,800. And this was in 2016. Proposed budget with option comparisons. Current funds available, 30800 Proposed request from taxpayers is an additional $40,000. Tony Hawk fund, potentially twenty five. dollars VSO fundraiser, 5000 Projected total, $100,080. 100800 no, $100, um, so And so there were three options, A, B, and C. A was a 5,800 square foot. B was 4,700 square foot. C was 4,200 square foot. They went 116, 190,000. They went, cost per square foot was 20 for the big one, up to 21 cents for the small one. And over budget, um, they had, uh, version C was a $90,000 total cost. And so theoretically, if this projected fundraising was did end out at a hundred thousand dollars, they would have ten more. So the idea is that this was a budget that laid out the ninety thousand dollars. Is that all from that December twelfth stuff? Can you can you send? Yeah, me all well, that? I'm just yeah. for so the budget's sort of laid out there. But it's but that was based on them getting forty more town meeting day, which they only ended up getting thirty more. So that'd be eighty thousand. Well, there was forty. Eighty thousand. They got forty. But that, yeah, but that was no. The hundred thousand was based on forty, but they got a thirty. Okay. So, so that'd 90. be ninety. Okay. What's the? But they didn't get the twenty-five from Tony Hawk. So we're down to seventy. It's really seventy. Seventy from the town. Yeah. It's more like sixty. We need to have a meeting with them. Yeah. Okay. But I'll send you this stuff. Thank you. You have a and there is a proposed timeline. <laughs> I don't know why I, I got bored. 11 3 2017 yeah, skate park was open. I'll have to go back and look. I yeah. think when they it was supposed to be completed by November 3rd, the promise is December. So, so, so really, it's an interesting, this is a good document. Right. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're the starting yeah. office. You can set it. And they have this the all out there, everybody. Right. They're assuming that every dime that's gone into that fund. Uh, any other and it's communications that come to the board? Or, and it's not their time so later. No, right. but this will be my last select board meeting. But you know what? Well, not, not now that we have to see the skateboard. I'll leave the skateboard park. It's not done yet. It's always about the end of June. So, so there's this kind of exact. It should yes. be. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We've got to follow the skateboard. I've got to download it. It's going to be boring. You know, it's all the time. Come on. I've got to download a gigabyte worth of select board package. I know. So I'd like to put it in the minutes of the meeting with Mrs. Carl's last meeting. And we certainly appreciate and, uh, all of his service over the time he's been on the board. And uh, wish him well. And hopefully he won't be too far away. Yeah. I wish him well in his future endeavors. Thanks.
Yeah, and I don't. I take it seriously. I, I don't think that a person should run for a, a board um, seat with a term and not serve out the term. But I, I have to make the change. So I appreciate everybody's that I've worked with. It's been great. Well, we appreciate working with you. Good. All right. Thank you, Carol. All right. The uh, and just to follow up on the, the board position, we had. Today, two applicants? I've had four applicants four. to date. And uh, we, because the newspaper had some issues, um, it didn't get posted when it should have, we've extended the date to the end, to the 30th. Okay. So the end of the month, I believe it's 30 days, yeah, to the 30th. And then um, my intent was to, um, after that, I'll get you all the, the information on all the applicants so that you can take a look at them, invite them all to come uh, interview with, with you uh, at the, on the ninth meeting, and then you can go in executive session and discuss and either come out and, and appoint somebody or give me some direction. Okay. So then I... Yep. Sounds um, good. There was an issue briefly last night. We were trying to post a link to your to the town website looking for applications for the position. Uh -huh. And there's two different dates on the yeah, section I of the did. website, so I don't know if that got fixed or not. I don't know. That was because one was the, the other was the third. Yeah. It's not a big deal. I just thought. Okay. I'll check on that. It's definitely the third. Any other business? Well, I will entertain a motion to go into an executive session to talk about legal matters. So move. Second. Okay. Five. Thank you, everybody. Are we any hey, Derek, how'd that go? With the yeah, gym. So. Good. Yeah. Lisa, you should call that to Jenny. Yeah. OK, thanks. He's in the background. Um, no decisions today. Did you cut it back? Yep. She was all paid up and everything. Oh, thanks. Oh, jeez. And all I did was grab your How do you know? I didn't know how to wear them. Yeah, better than us. Awesome. Great. Great. A little scared. Yeah. Wow, look at that. <laughs> Definitely.